Hello. Hello, Madam Kaitri. Uh, you can start. Hello. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for attending the class today. Um, yeah, early in the morning. And uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, my deck for creating this uh, amazing platform for me to talk today. So thank you so much again for attending. Uh, so today's topic will be on digital marketing strategies that you can use for the during this new normal. All right. Uh, so let's start. Okay, so uh, before I move forward, so I just want to let you all know, uh, this session is going to take around one hour, but uh, we will also have question and answering session later. So if you have any question, you can just jot it down or you can just write in the chat box and all that. Uh, I will try my best to uh, uh, address all the questions later. All right. Uh, so some of you might have not seen me, so it could be the first time you are seeing me. So I would like to introduce myself first. My name is Gayatri, and I'm a digital marketing a corporate trainer and a consultant. So I'm also running my own social media agency whereby I uh, service my corporate clients. So a little bit background about me. I have been involved in uh, digital marketing, in the marketing uh, uh, industry for more than 10 years now. So, and I've worked in corporate, and then I also worked with a few uh, market, uh, sorry, social media agencies to actually learn how to uh, the, learn the essence of social media, all right? And then I decided I'm going to uh, start my own uh, social media agency. And uh, like uh, seven years ago, almost seven years ago, we did. I, I started this and um, it's going on now, all right? So I also uh, consult and train uh, SMEs and MNCs on, digital, for, on their digital marketing department, okay? So these are some of my clients that uh, we have been servicing up to now. So some of them are, my, uh, are on my retainer basis, meaning I go on, I, I manage the entire social media platforms. Some of them I do trainings. I train their digital marketing team uh, and it's like a continuous thing that we do, all right? So just a little bit thing about me. So let's go on to our session today, okay? So I'm very sure everyone is like, um, this is the new normal, everything is, uh, Everything is new. When you go out and you see someone is not wearing their face mask, you feel something weird, right? So this is the new normal. We, we are trying to adapt to this new normal, but not only uh, on personal hygiene and taking care of our health against the COVID-19, there are a lot of other aspects in our, in our life that has changed, all right? So one of the things is the way how we socialize. You see, Birthdays are not like those days anymore. We have some Zoom, uh, for, we, we are in front of few laptops and phones so that our grandparents or our friends can join our birthday parties. You know, we don't go to worship places anymore because just because of social distancing and we don't want to be near any big mass crowd, you know. So the way we socialize has changed dramatically. And the way we change, uh, we work also has changed, right? Uh, some of us are really fortunate to have our jobs. Some of us are not so, uh, but let's hope for the best in the future. 
uh, working from home has become like a deep thing now. Some officers allow their staffs to come to the office, but with the social distancing and wearing masks and uh, following all the uh, health guidelines and stuff. And even the way we do business is different. You don't directly see your customers. Business is selling stuff, selling products, selling services to your customers, and you don't see them face to face. That's a big change in doing business, right? And the way we learn, the way our children are learning now, it's all online. We have remote learning. We have so many different types of learning now. And it's all from the comfort of your own home. Uh, learning has changed. School is going to change. Everything is going to change. The life, the way we live our life is going to change. All right. So the question here is, do you think we can go back to normal? The answer is, might be, yes. But what the World Health Organization mentioned is COVID-19 will stop the planet for a very, very long time to come. So it will be very hard. Okay, let's be positive here. It might be hard to go back to normal, but let's hope for the best as well. And uh, when we are hoping to, for the best, we should not be living in the present. Uh, sorry, we should not be living in the future. We should be living in the present. What can we do now so that we can adapt with these changes? Okay, so I'm going to tell you a short story. It's an interesting story about this uh, Italian restaurant called Resdora, Resdora Italian Restaurant. So this restaurant is, um, is in New York, all right? So they are a very high-end restaurant, very high-end restaurant, and they have like a very long uh, waiting list just to dine in. Okay, so what happened was uh, when U.S. announced lockdown, the restaurant business, obviously, they also get a hit because they can foresee that people won't be coming to the restaurant. It's only takeaway and all that, and they are not a takeaway restaurant. And uh, what they did is pretty interesting. So you see they have waiters in Italian restaurant. If you're aware of the waiters, highly trained posh waiters, and they are just, that they, they, they are... Um, they can write about their waiter, the, the profession in their resume. It's like top notch. You know, they are so polished. They're so professional waiters. So what this restaurant did is they decided to change the jobs of the waiters to become packing. So what happened was immediately they changed. Immediately they changed. So when this happened, they they started taking orders, okay? And mind you, they are not an online um, online platform. So they quickly changed, they quickly did all the back ends, their business go online. So they start taking in orders, they converted all their waiters because you can't be a waiter anymore there, right? Who are you going to serve? So they converted all the waiters into delivery men. They con uh, converted them into packaging person. So when they did this, the waiters still get to keep their job. If the waiters say, no, I'm just going to be a waiter, what do you think is going to happen to him? Sorry, bye, you won't have any work anymore. This is what happened. So another story that I wanted to share is this. What do you think a pizza place and a face shield have in common? This is a true story, okay? So this Dymos Pizza Place is in Chicago. So what they did, they also were badly affected by the lockdown. So they decided, they, but one thing they have was resources and some creative ideas. They decided to build, they decided to manufacture facial using the oven that they make pizza. How interesting is that, right? So because the oven can heat up to a high temperature and they have resources for the plastics and all, so they decided to mold and they sold it and they distributed it to the hospitals in Chicago. So this is a brilliant marketing effort. Now when everything goes back to normal, they might not have one business, they might have two businesses, right? So the moral of the story here is, it's time to adapt. And when I say adapt, it has to be quick. You have to be quick to adapt. Stop worrying about what's happening. You can't do anything. Can you control the virus? No. 
we can't do anything until certain vaccines comes out, until the authority do something about it. We can't do anything except for sitting quietly at home to do DM DM, remember? And um, we just have to adapt. We just have to acknowledge this is going to be, this is how the world is going to be for a long period from now. So we adapt quickly. The key word here is resilience. Okay? Adapting quickly, bouncing back quickly. Okay, guys? Now, the question is, are you prepared? Because the being prepared is actually the new normal. When these people say that new normal is uh, sitting at home, working from home, e-learning and stuff like that, that is the situation. The new normal is being prepared. Because, you see, if you don't have to get ready, if you're already stay ready, okay? If you're not so prepared, it's okay, we still have time. Let's go into how digital is helping the businesses. We'll see a little bit of uh, this, uh, what you call that, uh, the statistic, how business is actually helping people. One, business continue to operate. Business continue to operate despite not being able to open their physical stores, okay? We still have market, supermarket, and a lot of businesses are still operating because we have internet, because we have online mediums, all right? And then companies, important companies in the supply chain that need to be uh, operating, they still operate because they can get their, car, their employees to work from home. Okay, that's the second one. The third one is supermarket, takeaways, online retailers. They actually gained a lot during this crisis. Thanks to panic buying, they actually gained a lot during this crisis. All right. So... Yeah, now nobody is panic buying anymore. They are buying uh, more consciously. But in the beginning, you know, how things were, every, all the empty shelves in the supermarket, it shows that supermarkets are actually doing really well. And they can quickly um, restore whatever items that were totally out of stock, you know. So this digital is, this is also another way digital is helping that because you have all this online takeaway, online orders and stuff like that, okay? And children, when it's time to stay at home, we definitely don't want to jeopardize our children's education. So children's education also started booming because of remote learning and online classes. Yes, there are hiccups here and there, but we are just starting. So there will be definitely a way that we will find to fine tune everything here. And the best part is, we get fitness activities online. I attend classes, yoga classes online. So it's pretty interesting, pretty amazing how we can do everything with just having a laptop or a, your phone right in front of you. Okay. Now, let's go to digital marketing. So I'm sure most of you who attend here are running some sort of businesses. You guys are entrepreneurs, could be startups or self-employed and all. And you will be using digital marketing activities to improve your business. But at this time, we, have, we might need to change our strategy a bit. So what we've been doing all this while is great if it's giving you results. But now, in this new normal, in this crisis time, something that we used to do might not work anymore. Okay? As I go through, I have like 10 tips that I want to share with you guys. So as we are going through, I will explain one by one, all right? Thank you, thank you. So let's see what's happening in the digital world now. So why I'm like quite excited because I'm already in the digital line, see? So I'm quite excited about, no, not excited about the virus, but I'm just excited about what's happening now, see? Facebook saw 70% increase in usage in all its apps. Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, all these apps. They see 70% increase in usage, which is a good news for a marketer because I know all this while, maybe like 40% of my target audience were online. Now it's just increased to 70%. So this is the time that I can really market to them. And when I say market to them, you need to have a, a lot of things in consideration before you can just straight away, hey, buy my product, buy my service and stuff like that. It's not like that. Marketing is not like that. All right? So... We saw like 70% increase of usage. Why? Because uh, these people want to get entertained. These people want to still get connected and be informed with what's happening out there. 
and even though TV is one of the resourceful uh, news, TV news is one of the resourceful uh, resource, uh, uh, reliable resource, but people tend to see what's happening in Facebook. Okay, all right. And then this is another thing. There is a drop in marketing spend, including, there is a drop in marketing spend, including in social media. All right. So which means a lot of companies are not doing any marketing online. All right. So this is not something that I would uh, advise you. I would never advise you to do something like this. So there is a drop in marketing spend, but how you can make this work for you? I'll explain about this to you later, all right? Even though there's a drop in marketing spend, but there's a high increase in engagement in social media that the companies are doing to build their brand and customer engagement. Okay, this is a very smart thing to do at this current time, all right? So one of the 10 points will include this as well, all right? So I mentioned here, there's a drop in marketing spend, but don't worry about it. And there's an increase in engagement in social media, a social media engagement for brand and customer. So now, when it's time of crisis, there's nothing much you can do. There's something that important thing that you have to do now. Because before you can uh, send your, I mean, promote your product or promote your services or brand, you need to know your customers you need to know your audience if all this while you have never done this this is the right time for you to do this okay but the very important thing is to know your audience you see there is um there if you study marketing and stuff like that there is a marketing mix we call this the 4p the product place promotion and stuff like that right so the important thing in this 4p uh, to create this for B, you have to relate this back with your audience, all right? So you have to know who your audience are because they are like your biggest asset, okay? So this is the time for you to know them inside out. How? You need to identify basic information. You have a pool of customers, but do you know what are their demography? What's their age like? Who's the highest purchaser? What's their age like? What's their um, gender like? Where are they located at? So what's their income level? What's their education level? All these things are very important, okay? So you need to know the audience. Find out what they are thinking now, what kind of crisis they are facing now, what kind of challenges they are facing now, what they are looking for from your product, from the industry or from anything, okay? So how, how are they feeling right now, okay? All these things, is very important for a marketer to know because all this will help us in, in branding our product, in branding our marketing message. Okay, guys? All right. And then uh, take these answers, okay? Just compile all these answers, take a step back, develop a strategy, and then move forward. I'll give you an example. So when this MCO started on the 18th of March, I had like a three corporate training, one public training, and one speaking engagement. That was huge speaking engagement. Um, all this got canceled. It was a big loss for me, all right? And uh, what happened was um, I decided to do something. Uh, I cannot just sit home without doing my training. Yes, my social media agency is still working, thank God. But I still need to do something because I already have a team managing my social media agency and works on that. But I still need to do something. I still need to train people. And then I decided this could be a right time for me to actually get to know who I can train, what kind of topics I can train. So what I did, I started giving free trainings, weekly ones, one hour free trainings. And I sent out a form to, for them to sign up. Okay, it's just a simple Google form. But one of the important questions that I ask in the Google form is, what is your biggest challenge when it comes to social media marketing? Because I want to know what are they facing, okay? I already get their gender and their email address and all these things, all the information that I need, I already got. But this thing, what are they feeling? How are they, need, what, how they are responding actually to social media, my product? So I need to know that. So when I have had that uh, question, for them to fill in, 
I get all sorts of answers. Okay. And then what I do with the answers? I take the answers and then I put it in a tablet. I tablet it pro properly and then I see where the challenges are and how I can come in to give them the solution. So when I started, when I thought that I'm going to uh, teach about Facebook ads, I'm going to teach about uh, how to uh, analyze your data and how to create a proper content strategy and stuff like that. But then I realized I need to start from basic because a lot of my audience, they still don't know how to use social media properly. So my all free training was on how to use social media in the right way, how to use it wisely. And up to now, I'm very happy to say I have trained close to 200 of them now. And uh, they, they are, some of them has come back to me for advanced classes, uh, which is a paid class, of course. Um, and then uh, some also, this is another thing, right? Um, some also wanted me to take, uh, be their coach. That means trainer, I just train for one or two days and then it's done. So coach means I be with them for a, a longer period of time and, and guide them through. So if you ask me, when I started to know my audience, a lot of things opened up for me because they know that I'm there to solve their problem. So even for you, know your audience, really, really dig deeper and know your audience, get what they really want. Okay. And one of the way to know your audience is by building their customer persona. Okay. Those who attended my class yesterday, I think some of you here attended my class yesterday, you had seen this. Okay. Customer persona is, this is actually, when you want to create ads on Facebook, you have to create customer persona. But the same thing, the same principle applies. If you want to know clearly about your client, build them a customer persona. Give them a name. Give them an avatar. Okay. A persona is like an avatar. It's not a real person. It's just an avatar. All right. So answer all these questions. What could be their buying concern? Maybe your pricing is too high or maybe uh, it's, uh, you know, there could be a price, there could be quality, they could be looking at other things. So they could be that, that could be their buying concern. What are the challenges they're facing now? What is the company size where they are working? You know, all these things are just, I'm just putting this uh, because this is normally how we do, all right? So there are other things also you can include here. The idea is you have to create a customer persona so that you know who are your target audience is. Okay. And then that is creating a customer persona. This is to re-engage with the audience. You see guys, this is like the best time, best time, best time to actually go back to your old audience. They're not in touch with you and connect back. Just connect back. All right. So how do you do? You engage them on social media, all right? You engage them on social media. If you have a good marketing, uh, uh, email marketing strategy, you can use that. But please don't go and sell anything to them. This is not the time to sell things. This is time to reconnect back, okay? It will be um, really uh, weird, you know, awkward if you just email them and say, see, I have a promotion, I have new product, buy from me. It doesn't work that way, okay? So when you are re-engaging with your target audience, you actually need to see how they are doing because you're just going back to them again, right? So just create a nice message on social media. Uh, just talk to them about what happened in the past and stuff and put a lot of tips, you know, all the things that can get them engaging again. Okay, but don't sell anything. If you can, just give value-added content. All right, content that can add value to them. Okay, so yeah, tell relevant stories, authentic stories, always practice giving, giving, giving. It's okay if you give something for free. It's okay. It's definitely okay to give something for free. Okay, I know times are bad. You, are, you might be struggling uh, to make the sales and all that, but giving content, giving tips, giving ideas that are free, you, you are actually creating an impact to them. All right. So also, you can also create campaigns that resonate with the current situation. So maybe like uh, donate one ringgit so that we can go and you know, buy from, uh, you know, donate and so that we can get something for the frontliners and stuff like that. You can think for your, your business, right? So for example, what uh, I was planning to do in the future also. So when I start my um, two months, I have like this uh, uh, training period of two months, coaching session of two months. 
So I want to contribute a portion of the, the fee to the frontliners, to those who need, you know. So that is going to be one of the campaigns. So you can do something like that. I'm not saying that you have to do this, but you can do something like that as well. All right. And the outcome from this, when you re-engage your audience and you, cre uh, you, you get your right audience, you're actually building a strong relationship. Okay. And you're building a strong trust with them. And this will also give you opportunities. You can discover new opportunities. Maybe I can just uh, tell a little bit. So I was in social media agency all this while, not into training, until one day my client asked me, Kaitri, can you train my digital marketing team? And mind you, they, they are my uh, social media, uh, one of my clients for my social media agency. And if I say yes, that means I'm going to teach them my trade secret and they are going to do it on, on their own, all right? But what I did, I said, yes, definitely, I can teach you a thing. Because the thing is, they cannot afford me. They have some budget issues and they cannot afford me on my monthly basis. But I say, it's okay, I can teach you a digital marketing thing. It's just a fixed price, I'll teach them. And for the next three months, I will just still coach them. So it's just that. And guess what? That actually created opportunity. I lost that one business, just that one business, it's okay. They actually created me another opportunity as a new platform for me as a corporate trainer. They introduced me to different corporate clients where I start giving my corporate training to them, which is an interesting thing. And recently what happened, one of my students, after attending my course, she said, Gayatri, can you be our coach? I was like, um, I, I don't know, what, what do you mean coach? I mean, then she mentioned like, they want me to be there throughout the campaign. They want me to, 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 to guide them throughout the campaign and stuff like that. And guess what I say? Yes, definitely. So these are the new opportunities that I, I got because I decided to re-engage with my audience. I decided to know them better, okay? So I want, uh, some of you might have already seen this video, but uh, I would really love if you can uh, watch this again. Um, all right, guys, so I'm going to just, this is a very, very powerful video that I showed. I showed this in my class yesterday. So I just want you all to have a look at this video as well. Uh, it shows about customer, how important it is to know your customer. Okay? All right, let's watch it. Oh, you can't hear. Let me just check. Uh, okay, sorry, sorry. You should be able to hear. Look now. at my husband. Let me just start this again. Husband. And he says, Okay, starting again. There's a Harvard Business Review called Connect Then Lead. It states Connect Then Lead. It states they did a lot of research on thousands and thousands of leaders and salespeople. And what they found is that the two most important traits of top leaders and salespeople for influence are competency and empathy. But the order matters. I'm going to share a, a quick little story with you. My husband decided to trade in what we lovingly called his shopping cart of a vehicle. He called the sales guy and made an appointment. And as we're driving down, he looks at me and he says, now listen, no matter what he says, no matter what the price is, we're not buying anything today. You got that? I said, I, I got it. So we get to the car dealership. Out comes this sort of middle-aged silver-haired guy. He takes one look at my husband 
and he says, Lee Gerstein, it is so amazing to meet you. He said, I hope you don't mind. I looked you up on LinkedIn. I like to know a little bit about the people I'm going to serve. And he said, I see that you're the past president for the National Ability Center, and my own son has autism. He said, I just want to thank you for the work that you do. My husband's eyes just lit up, right? <laughs> they go into Jared's office and they start talking about autism research, about cures. This goes on for 25, 35 minutes. We stand up, we're walking to go out on the car lot. We haven't even seen a truck. My husband looks at me and he says, I think he has what we need here. <laughs> Here's the thing, Jared had the competency for trucks. Jared knew about all the different models. He knew about the horsepower. He probably knew the future of self-driverless trucks. But he knew something much more important. He knew my husband, Lee. And that's why you may want to write this one down. Trust is built of five components, but it's empathy that gets you in the door. It's reliability, competency, integrity, and vulnerability that keep you there. But you have to lead with empathy. Both are equally important. You need to know your product, you need to know your people. But here's the thing, before people decide what they think of your message, they decide what they think of you. Don't ever forget that. There's a Harvard, there's a Harvard okay. Business Review how interesting was that, right? So I actually showed this uh, to my class yesterday. So we had like around 88 of them there yesterday on social media marketing. And I got very excited when I first saw this video because it did, it just uh, so powerful when you know your audience, you know, you need to know your audience so that you can serve them well. Um, so, okay. So I hope you all enjoyed the video and always keep in your mind that audience your customer they are very very important it's not that you have to sell your product to them it's how they need your product whether they need your product or not so whatever they need you have to give it to them it's not about push marketing here all right all right so that's about the audience so for the first and second part it's more more or less on the audience the third part today is on content marketing okay this is the right time for you to relook at your content marketing strategy so if you have a website, you might want to revamp your website. If you have social media platforms, you want to develop a proper content strategy for your platforms, all right? So give away information, tips, anything that is valuable for your customers, anything that, that DIYs thing they can do and stuff like that. So create a proper content for your customers, all right? So when I mentioned creating content, one of the important thing about creating content is to have a content pillars, okay? Content pillars are themes, all right? Themes of what you want to talk to your, uh, to your customers, to your audience, all right? And um, your themes, you might already have some themes in the past. It's time to really look at the theme and make it current. Write good caption, design proper images that suits your audience. Write blogs around your product, your services, and the current situation, right? Consume, get them, consume your, your, your knowledge. Let them consume your information. Let them consume about your product and your services and whatnot. You know? So just create this content for them. So when you're creating content, there's two things. What your brand cares about, that's one, one, one set. And then there's another set is what your audience care about. So it's about what you want and what your audience want. And when they overlap, this is where you create your content. It's a mixture of what you want, what you actually care about, what you actually provide, and with what your audience really want. All right? So the, the key in creating a content pillar is this. Okay, always keep this in mind. It's not because most of them, most of the marketing person now, they just try to push things about what they want, what they care about, what the product is all about, what the service is all about. All right? So here are some of the example of um, content pillars. So you can have brand awareness posts, okay? You can always go for brand awareness posts. Yes, a little bit of selling posts, motivational quotes. You can have fun posts, you can have polls. Now we have a lot of live, audience, uh, live videos that you can do on Facebook, on Instagram. Make use of all of that. Give good content to your uh, audience, okay? 
and this is also probably be the best time to build your brand okay so when you think about building your brand your personal brand or your business brand think operate and lead in a new way during crisis whatever you stand for in the past don't have to bring it now unless it is related to what is happening now but in the new normal in the new current you always want to change your branding strategy okay now you already have a lot of time here now so plan your social media posting create contents the customer want plan out for the next 2 months all right plan out for the next 2 months show them the business is alive okay one of the reason why you're posting every day is you want to show them that your business is alive and always follow this 80 20% rule okay why this 80 20% rule 80% of your content all the content you might want to check this back again okay 80% of your overall content needs to be informative needs to be entertaining and needs to be giving some kind of uh, education and uh, it's useful you know giving them educational posts giving them inspirational posts giving them uh, the kind of uh, information that they can take and in the future they can use that to take an informed decision whether to buy your product or not okay so this content marketing is not about selling it's about giving them all this information let them take the decision okay and the small 20% you see the small 20% there there is your selling post all right so in social media it's always this is the rule if you're not following this rule it's time for you to change your content strategy follow this rule it has to be 80 20% rule okay and be considerate about your content guys this is a time of crisis we don't want to be um con uh, considered ignorant okay when the time of crisis carefully evaluate your brand's ima image and the language that you are use the tone the visual the copy the ones that you are going to write your keywords and the media placements all plays an important role you have to look clearly into this okay be relevant to the new industry new reality avoid using like let's say if you need to use images avoid using images with crowded crowds you know because you we are practicing social distancing we don't want to show image with a lot of people together and don't use things uh, if you want to use uh, words like get in touch hand in hand you know you might want to rethink about it because when we say we are not even to shake hand with other people you know we are practicing social distancing and all that so we might not want to use words like this okay so what i'm telling you is this is this is something that we are already practicing with my clients so in our post we avoid using words like this because we want to be in consistent with what the government wants consistent with the health guidelines all right so sometimes even just words like this can 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 appear negative in the in the crisis time okay and uh, build your marketing funnel okay if you don't have any marketing funnel now it's time for you to build one marketing funnel is important for all businesses any businesses you need to know where your customer are how are you going to bring your customer down the marketing funnel and stuff all right so this is a example of marketing funnel all right first you have to go from the awareness level the consideration conversion loyalty and advocacy level so this is where your customer you actually bring them down one by one i'll go a bit detail here okay so you can call it buyer's journey you can is the same thing all right so awareness means the people don't know about your product all right so in order to tell them about your product you need to create posts that highlights why they might need the product you see some people might have some problem and they are looking for a solution some people they just don't know they have a problem and they don't know there's a solution available so as a marketing person as a product owner our duty is to highlight to them that hey look you got a problem okay so in awareness part you need to highlight to uh, to your audience that they got a problem and you got a solution all right so this is how you expose your target audience to branded content so the business impact here if if you see this is sob and toma right sob stands for a share of voice and toma is top of 
mind awareness. That means whenever people people are talking about certain products in the market, all right, and how many, what is the share of your product, share of your voice about the products that they're talking? For example, let's say people are talking about um, uh, isotonic drinks. How many percentage are actually talk about 100 plus? How many of them are talking about Gatorade? So there is a share of voice for 100 plus and there's a share of voice for Gatorade. So if one of these is your brand, how are you going to increase your share of voice? Top of marketing awareness means when people talk about certain product and your products, your brand comes straight to the mind. That is top of marketing awareness. All right. So when you're creating content for awareness, always think about this. Okay. And create your, your social media strategy should be along this line. And then the next part of the awareness. Awareness means they already know that, oh, I have a problem. But the considering part, the consideration part is, I have a problem, I, I need a solution. But the thing is, you are not the only solution provider. We already have a lot of other solution providers. So why should I buy from you? So this is the part where you have to drive engagement of target audience with more branded content. You know, you have to get them, uh, give them a lot of testimonies of past clients and why they have to buy from you, stuff like that. Okay. And then we move to the next part is the decision making part. So when they are going to make a decision, it needs to be something that they can purchase fast. Okay. So if they already, uh, already, uh, what you call that, um, they are, they already consider that your brand is the best and they decided to just buy, it's fine. If they're still in the deciding process, Think of another product that can make them easily come on board. Okay, this is like the lowest hanging fruit that they can just grab and be in your funnel first. All right. So think about something like for me, I, I created a lot of uh, uh, free, uh, free uh, classes and all that. So of course, I didn't want to, I mean, that my, my, my uh, bias journey is a bit different, but I'm just telling. So give them something that they can come inside your your funnel first, all right? And adoption. So now they're already using your, they are already using your product. So they need to have more, uh, what you call that product knowledge. They need to have more support here. So what you can do to support them. So that is something on adoption. And the moment they already adopted to your product, the moment they already like your product, they already used your product. Now they will become your brand advocate. You, our final goal as a marketeer is always to bring our customer from the top level of awareness when they totally have no idea about your business to the last level of brand advocate. Okay, so when they come into a brand advocacy, these are way of them being your ambassador. They will talk on your behalf. All right. So when you're building a marketing funnel, this is the right time because you have a little bit of time to do all this. So map up, map up your uh, Marketing funnel, very important for any marketing person, right? Number seven, invest in marketing. Okay, I mentioned earlier in my earlier slide that there's a drop in uh, social media ads, all right? But what you're supposed to do now is you should not stop marketing, all right? So a wise man like this, Henry Ford, by the way, he mentioned that a man who stops advertising to save money is like a man who stops a claw to wait, save time. Does that even make sense, right? So this is what uh, we can take when you stop your marketing, uh, marketing in it to, when you stop investing in your marketing. Always invest in your marketing, all right? Because the moment you advertise more, then you will get back more. It's just that you need to have the right strategy, okay? Without having a right strategy, when you start advertising, it's like almost similar to suicide. All right, have a right strategy, then advertise, all right? Don't say, Gayatri, my ask us to advertise, so I'm going to advertise. No, have a strategy, then advertise, all right? Okay, so now you already created your content. You have all the proper content. You can, of course, do a, prop, a good SEO and all that for your website and hope the leads will kick in, but it will take time. Search engine optimization is not fast. It's free, but it is not fast. It will take a long time for clients to really consume your your idea, your product, all right, in search engine. Meanwhile, you can do paid ads like Google ads or Facebook ads. I will advise 
go for Facebook ads first because Google ads can be very expensive. Okay, so Facebook ads is um, so much cheaper than Google ads. So start little bit by doing Facebook ads. If you don't know how to do, just drop a message later. We can do a class on that. Don't worry. Create lead generation activities, okay, very important. So we call this lead magnets, okay? Lead magnets are incentives that you offer for potential client in exchange with their contact information. Why contact information? These are gold mine. They are data, it's gold mine. Why do you think Facebook is stalking you? Why do you think they are listening to every conversation? Because they want to catch all this data so that they can use it and sell it back to us, all right? So you can do that also. So by doing like uh, giving them free ebooks, templates, you know, download the template, just give me your email address, your, your, your email address is good enough actually, your name and your email address. So in exchange for that, I, I'm giving you a template or some discount voucher. So you can create some kind of a lead generation activities to get all this. And this is the right time to do because people are so busy, they would just want to take everything free online. Okay. And nine, contribute help, contribute and help all at every opportunity that you get right so you need to know how brand can support they can uh, be an advocate they can donate or even uh, amplify information all right so try to be that kind of brand it's not always about us it's always about them remember that it's always about them all right be helpful to people and and especially at this time of need we need to be very very generous we need to be uh, to have a big heart to give something right and always show your gratitude say thank you <laughs> all right say thank you when you get you know there's a lot of people that we need to thank now so just show the attitude show the gratitude all right and uh, this is something that uh, will put anyone off never capitalize on crisis you see don't inflict fear and monetize from it that's not cool that is not that's not cool so uh Rely on proactive measures and inform consumers about uh, what is the organization's uh, uh, response against COVID-19. How are you taking uh, preventive measures or uh, how are you taking the health guidelines uh, and putting it in action? You need to be transparent about this, all right? Don't inflict fear. Don't tell that, uh, you know, unnecessary things and just create panic that's not needed. And as a business owner, that's the last thing that you want to do, okay? And finally, at this uh, time of crisis, educate yourself. Because uh, now we have like a lot of free things going around. So open your eyes, bigger. Uh, you don't have to take everything that come your way. Look for what you really need to improvise yourself. Learn some online courses. If you're on LinkedIn, there are LinkedIn platforms that, uh, LinkedIn learning platforms, they give you like beautiful contents and all that. And you can get it free for like uh, one month. So just get, get into it. You can download all and you can read later. Uh, you can go to Coursera. Coursera gives a lot of free courses. And uh, this, is, this is actually the right time for you to make yourself, educate yourself and by consuming intelligent media, stop watching drama, stop watching TV, stop watching all the nonsense things on TV. You don't need that. <laughs> we are in a better way to consume ourselves with good intelligent media. All right. So, uh, you know, just uh, be selective of what you want to uh, get for yourself. All right. This is the time actually for you to educate yourself more. All right. So just educate yourself. All right. And uh, before I want to, I, I take questions for you guys. Uh, I want to show you a beautiful video that Dove, you know, the soap Dove did. Uh, and uh, that actually just resonate with what's happening now. And it's another way of uh, whatever I thought, the 10 top topics that I mentioned, they kind of put it all together and did a campaign out of that. It was just beautiful. Okay, so let's just see that first. Just a second.
So if you don't understand, let me just tell what ha just happened in Dove. So Dove actually videotaped all these frontline workers who are supposed to wear like mask and all this uh, hazmat uniform and all that for like a very long period of time, which until it leaves like a very deep uh, scar on their face, deep markings on their face. And if you see in some of the uh, images, it really looks very painful, you see. So they just took all these photos and say that it's not uh, white is beautiful or skin is beautiful or this one is beautiful, it's courage is beautiful. And they also donated to the frontliners and um, in the marketing sense, in the marketing uh, dollars, what they get back was so much more than this, right? So these are some of the amazing things that they do, okay? So um, before I end, uh, last but not least, you see, um, your business might have dropped. You have significant decrease in people purchasing from you. Or some of us are just so lucky that this is the time your business picked up, you know. But the thing is, uh, when, when purchases reduce, doesn't mean you should go down also, okay. Use this time to reflect, to move slowly towards whatever your uh, uh, marketing goal is. Write it down. Be very, very positive about it and just uh, be, be positive that things will get better. But it will be get better in the new normal. Things are going to be like this for a long period of time. The thing is resilience. Adapt quickly. If you need to be online, start being online. Start selling. Start doing everything online. Okay, don't wait. Um, when I started my training online, I started just one week late uh, after MCO was um, announced. So I've been keep doing this. And uh, some of my training uh, friends, trainers, uh, they still haven't get into the essence of it. But good, good thing is they already know the importance of it. And uh, they are everyone, all the trainers are already into this, uh, the same platform like me now. So it is very important to be on digital now. So if you have any question, I'm, I'm very happy to answer you now. So I'm going to just pop this share. And I'm going to take in questions. Okay, guys. Do you have any questions? Hello. So that means you understand everything. Wait, open. <laughs> Your next class, Vita. No, madam, thank you so much. Vashan Ganesh. So if you have any question, I can answer, right? So you, you guys can hear me, right? Your next class on how to do FB will be successful. All right. If, if you want, uh, definitely, I will, uh, I will talk with the, uh, our organizers and let's do a FB course also, FBX course. All right. That's one. Answer line. You guys can hear me, right? All right. What is your take for those in wellness industry as we are unable to operate? Uh, can you be a bit uh, detailed, Lata? I'm not very sure what you mean in wellness and industry. And why are you unable to uh, operate? Wellness industry means? Okay, I'll just this one. Contact details. Okay, any contact details? Uh, I think uh, my dad will answer that. Okay, good presentation. Thank you, Rita. If I'm a makeup artist, what your advice would be how to promote my business online? Okay, I know as makeup artists, because uh, people are not doing all this, uh, what do you call that, uh, weddings and all that as being postponed. I know you're being hit very badly. Uh, so what I'll just share with you what happened with uh, one of my uh, clients. 
who is involved in um, uh, a beauty product, all right? So she did online class for me on how to use her product. So which was very interesting, okay? So uh, maybe you can try something like that. Yes, of course, makeup thing is getting, nobody is going to come to you now for all this um, makeup, uh, sorry, for all the services now because they might not need it. But what you can do to add value to them? Can you give out tips on how to do like simple makeup? You know, we do live uh, all the time. So maybe you can teach us how to do like simple makeup and stuff like that. So think about how you can actually using your expertise. You are a makeup artist person, no? How you can use your expertise to actually educate other people. All right? Gunavati, I hope I answered you. You guys can hear me, right? Oh, we are a yoga center and currently conducting motion. What else we can do to keep up? Okay. So I have a yoga, um, I mean, I know how it is also. So what you can do, yeah, uh, like what you do is uh, you are doing virtual classes. So keep on doing virtual classes. What else can you do to keep up? Um, do you want to like um, uh, portray yourself as like the thought leader of yoga? If yes, team up with other yoga centers. This is an idea that I'm giving, you know, team up with other yoga centers and do like a session, like a uh, engaging session, interview and how you can, how things can be better during this time and how you can uh, spread the positivity of yoga, give more uh, online ideas, online teachings of yoga methods, yoga teachings and stuff like that. All right, Lata? So you are a uh, good thing that you're already conducting virtual classes. Yeah, my yoga teacher is also doing that. Okay. So yeah, uh, and she's doing like uh, in a day, like three or four times every one hour. Uh, the Every class is like one hour. So I think it's, uh, she's even more busier now compared to last time. So yeah, you can try that. Okay. So you are a yoga center. That's your question, right? Okay. So any more questions, guys? A good presentation. All right. Thank you so much for your kind of manners. Okay. It was very clear. Thank you. Thank you. Having life of this makes a dream. But I realize, I guess realizing this Facebook is contemplating. <laughs> okay. So why, Satya, why Facebook wants to pay for, is contemplating of having fee for Facebook live ads is because a lot of um, uh, businesses, that are um, showbiz, all right? So they need people to come. They need people to purchase the ticket and all that are losing business. So Facebook is contemplating, actually it's already in the plan to make Facebook live ads, uh, paid, paid live ads. But it won't be for all. It will be for certain industries only. So we will still have this kind of live free live sessions, but don't worry about it. For the showbiz, for the event that they need to sell tickets and they see a very uh, high drop in income. So for them, yes, this will be helpful for them. So just like how we buy, buy a ticket to go and watch some uh, concert or what. So now you just pay Facebook live ads and watch it on your laptop. Yeah. Any more questions, guys? No matter. Thank you very much. Okay, let me get, thank you very much. I appreciate your class. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, maybe you, uh, what you can do if there's no more questions or if I can still take in questions. Um, my deck is doing an awesome job in creating a venue like this uh, so that um, trainers or any, any uh, solution providers like myself can actually communicate with you guys, even though I can't see your faces now because I normally do in a, not, not a webinar. Um, <laughs> so I hope uh, you can go back to my desk page and give a very good comment there. And uh, do also follow me on my Facebook page. Okay, it's just Gayatri. You see my name there, Gayatri. So it's just that, Gayatri Digital Marketing Trainer. Just follow me as well. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I think I have some more questions. Mohana Krishna. Um, yeah, that's my, uh, how do you contact me? Yeah, that's my WhatsApp, uh, sorry, that's my uh, uh, Facebook page, Kayatri Digital Marketing Trainer. You can look up 
on my Facebook. So I don't think so many people have my spelling. All right. So if you guys have um, wait, Ganesan. I'm into garden and landscape business. I'm creating awareness of caring and preserving the nature in FB and Instagram. And the same time promoting my plants and products. 8020, that is awesome. Yes, that is marketing done right there. Ganesan, awesome. So this is how you do, all right? This is how you do, create that kind of uh, content. So I'm so going to follow you on your Facebook. Uh, do you mind giving me your Facebook page here? I'm so going to follow you on Facebook. Satya, who can we liaise in with uh, my dad? Uh, we have uh, Shankar, we have Ganesh here. So I can I can get you connected later. No worries, Satya. <laughs> okay, Ganesan, you are doing an awesome job. Yes, that's what you are doing. That, that's what you're supposed to be doing. Okay? Okay, thanks. Oh, just now I share about free content in LinkedIn. Can please share it? Okay, what you need to do is, I'll just type it here. Go to LinkedIn. If you already have a LinkedIn page, go to LinkedIn. And, or, or what you can do, LinkedIn Learning actually. It's not just LinkedIn, it's LinkedIn le Learning. There's an apps on uh, Google Store and Apple Store, Apple. Uh, and then you can just type this, LinkedIn Learning, and download. And you'll see that thousands of things that you can you can thousand a lot a lot of uh, information yeah all right any more questions i just typed in for you good presentation thank you thank you thank you for the great tips thank you so much thank you for being here thank you madam no just call me gayatri no madam your next class okay good good so guys uh so thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to save this GMSD flower. Okay, thank you so much, Ganesan. I'm uh, really happy that you're doing what I thought I'm teaching here. So you're already doing it. Just keep doing it, all right? Awesome. Okay, love to be here. And thank you so much. Please follow my deck and uh, give good comments for them. And also you can follow me on my Facebook page. So thank you. See you all. Bye. Bye. I'm so nice. Hello.